Mermaid, the standard efficiency in HVC filtration. But um, what does Mervate actually get you? Well, before we go into what it actually does for you, we have to kind of understand how it became the standard. Uh, and prior to Merv efficiencies being around, we just kind of spec'd pleated and panel filters because they were inexpensive and we thought we gave enough filtration for it. So when Merv came along, we had Merv 7 as kind of a standard spec because that's what those pleated and panel filters were. And then some years ago, those same filters are now testing at MERV 8. So now that the same type of filters are testing MERV 8, we just continue to spec the same style of filters. So that's how we kind of got MERV 8 written in there because we just wanted to continue that same level of filtration that had been used for years past. So what does MERV-8 actually catch? And this is when we say, what are they doing for you? So looking at what MERV tests, they test three different particle size ranges, 0.3 microns to 1 micron, 1 to 3, and 3 to 10. MERV-8 is only tested at the 3 to 10 micron range, and we have to capture 70% of those particles in that, that largest range. So that's good news, right? It catches all those big particles. We don't need to overdo it on filtration, but the smaller particles are actually the harmful ones. And Ashry states right within the MERV test procedure that atmospheric air has a statistically insignificant number of particles over 3 microns. So there's a statistically insignificant number of particles in ambient air that we're actually catching with those MERV-8 filters. So we can see a little bit better on this graph. That red box in the lower right hand corner shows you what MERV-8 catches and compare that to what is actually in the air. So in addition to not really catching much particulate, we also rely on this MERV-8 standard. We are also ignoring you know, molecular gases contaminants found in atmospheric air. The biggest two of concern right now are ozone and carbon monoxide. Another issue is we've had a kind of an influx of synthetic media in air filters. This has kind of created false efficiencies. ASHRAE tried to acknowledge that in 52.2 with uh, Appendix J. Um, and again, it's on page 3 of the 52.2012 test procedure booklet that they say right in there, synthetic media loses efficiency. Appendix J was created to show you what that efficiency is real world, but there's just some issues with that test, and it's not producing the same results when we do Appendix J, conditioning to a filter and testing that efficiency versus taking a filter that's been in service and has reached you know halfway through life or end of life of the filter, and when we do particle testing on that, it shows to lose a lot more real world than what we show even with Appendix J. So why do we even have synthetic media? Well, it's less expensive and in this race to supply products that are cheaper, we use synthetic medias as air filter manufacturers because we're looking at that, that purchase price. So this whole thing about losing efficiency kind of gets pushed to the side and kind of becomes an error of omission or, or negligence. The other thing that you'll see with synthetic medias is they will have lower static pressures on the literature. <clears throat> and that's because when we look at a, a zoomed in picture here of the two different medias, We'll see the fine fiber on the left hand side and that shows the uh, fine fiber MERV-14 media versus on the right hand side a synthetic MERV-14. And you can see here when that synthetic media starts to lose the, the bit of charge that is on the, the media itself, it's just not tightly woven enough to capture all those real fine particles to, to get the higher efficiencies that we're looking for out of these filters. But you can also see it's much more open. More open uh, media means lower pressure drops. So that's why you'll see lower initial static pressure on synthetic medias. However, once they start to load, 
um, we see them reaching final pressures much faster uh, than, than a well-designed fine fiber media and you're losing efficiency. So again, in real world application, the synthetics, we see the pressures go up faster. So we lose that initial uh, bit of energy savings rather quickly. And then you're losing these, these particulate efficiency along the way. So just to recap, you know, Murray was chosen basically by default as a minimum level of protection for the equipment. We didn't take into account building occupants. MERV-8 allows 99% of particles to pass right through the middle of the media and it does nothing to address molecular or gases contaminants. MERV-13 should be the new standard. That's what we should see in more and more specs because it's actually going to provide some level of protection for people. Uh, that's what we see LEED and ASHRAE kind of recommend and we're seeing more and more uh, state and local uh, projects require a higher efficiency. Uh, some are still laying behind at MERV 11, but the more and more doing newer studies, MERV 13 seems to kind of be the new new level that that is needed. Molecular and gases contaminants should be addressed. Um, you know, if you're out in a rural area and there's not a lot of traffic or people or buildings around, chances are in the United States you're, you're going to be okay and not need to address that because the the concentration levels of those contaminants are going to be pretty low still, but the closer you get to big cities or close to a roadway or if you're near an airport or some other object that's going to be creating these contaminants, it, it is something that should be addressed and is something that's going to be monitored much, much more closely here uh, in the future. And synthetic media is cheaper to produce, so unless engineers and end users demand the higher performing fine fiber, you know, mil manufacturers are still going to make synthetic medias. We're going to find a way to make them cheaper and give them a bigger charge so we can get lower pressure drops and make them seem really good on paper. And they're not really going to care what they do in the real world as far as efficiencies because if they can make it cheaper, make it look like it's going to save them more energy based on initial static pressures, then that's what, that's what the manufacturers are going to do. So it just is up to the engineer and up to the end users to make sure that we know what we're specifying, we know what we're designing, so that um, in real life operation we have something that's actually going to be going to be beneficial.